anything you possess for business, for trade, to buy, to sell. You buy it to sell it. You buy it to sell it. But consider it a commodity, zakat do upon them. Let it be cars, houses, lands, uh, fabrics, uh, whatever it is of commodities that you buy with intention to sell, zakat is do upon them. So what you do when the year lapses, you, cal you calculate their value in the market now, not when you bought them, the value of them in the market now, and then you divide by 40, or you, which will give you the 2.5%. And then you pay, that's the zakat do upon you. The thing is that you have for your personal use. For personal use, there is no zakat do upon them. Houses you have for personal use, cars you have for personal use. No zakat do upon them, and the evidence is a statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that regard. As we said, everything you have for personal use, no zakat do upon them with the exception of gold and silver. For several reasons. But to make the matter simplified, any gold and silver you possess, your wife possesses for decorative reasons, for personal use, to hoard up and to save, Zakat is due upon them if they reach the Nisab and a year passes over them. The Nisab is a threshold. If you have gold, the Nisab is that if it reaches 85 grams, if it reaches 85 grams of gold, now Zakat kicked in. You've reached the threshold. The second condition, a year, a Hijri year, passes over it. If a Hijri year passes over it, you calculate the value of that gold. What's a gram today of gold? 85 grams of gold today is equivalent to about 5,200, 5,200, give or take. So you give the zakah on the, what's the equivalent of that? Silver, the same thing. If you have 595 grams of silver or more, and a year passes through them, zakah is due upon them. And that's every year you possess these conditions. Every year you have these two conditions. Now, some of the scholars said, there's no zakah due on gold and silver that is used for personal use. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do not make exceptions. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, any owner of gold and silver that does not pay what's due on him, when the day of resurrection will come, plates of fire will be beaten out for him. These will be then heated in the fire of hell. His side and his forehead and his back will be catarized with them for a day that would last for 50,000 years. The Prophet did not make exceptions. Second evidence, hadith authenticated by Nasai Abu Dawood and Imam Ahmed. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a woman came to him with her daughter, accompanied by her daughter, who wore two heavy gold bangles. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, do you pay the zakah on them? She said, no. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, are you pleased that Allah may put two bangles of fire on your wrist on a day of resurrection? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows that she's wearing them for personal use. Without exceptions, he didn't give it. He didn't make that exception. So anyone that possessed gold and silver should indeed pay the zakah due on them if they reach the nisab. 85 grams or more of gold, 595 grams or more of silver. The final matter that I wanted to mention, inshallah, in regards of zakat today, is that the money. How do we calculate the, the money that we save? And I, Akhwan, how do we know when we reach the nisab? You know that you reach the nisab if you reach the lowest of the two value, gold or silver. If you reach what's equivalent to 85 grams of gold or 595 grams of silver, whichever is lower. Upon that is the majority of the people of knowledge. Some of the people of now say gold. But the majority of them, even the ones that said gold, have changed, subhanAllah, a lot of them, and said silver. So any time you reach what's equivalent to 595 grams of gold, uh, silver, which is about $490, give or take today's value, you reach the nisab. Now you have fulfilled the, one condition, the first condition of zakah. You have reached the threshold. You write that date down. On that date, on the 15th or the 16th of Ramadan, I have reached the nisab. Comes next year, the 16th of Ramadan. You see how much you have. If you have that amount or more, you divide that amount by 40, it will give you what's due upon you of zakat. It will give you the 2.5%. If comes next Ramadan and you have nothing, or you have less than what's equivalent to 595 grams of silver, you have $100, there is no zakat due upon you because you have less than the nisab. By ikhwan, the nisab kicks in with the amount of 595 grams of silver. Zakah must be paid. If you have not paid it in the past, you need to go back and value your wealth and pay your zakah. Zakah, ya khwan, is a pillar that does not get waived by ignorance. Servants of Allah, it is incumbent upon the Muslim to fulfill the rights of Allah and to fulfill the rights of Allah with a complete obedience and to hasten toward fulfilling that right with indeed complete satisfaction, rushing toward and hastening towards Allah 
not fleeing from that matter, loving to do it, not hating to do it. Because he knows that Allah the Exalted says, and those who hoard gold and silver and spend it not in the way of Allah, give them tidings of a painful punishment, the day when it will be heated in the fire of hell and seared there will be their foreheads, their flanks, their backs. It will be said, this is what you hoarded for yourself, so taste what you used to hoard.